In 2001, a now largely forgotten product saved Apple from extinction. It was called iPod. Apple was just in the right place at just the right time. Just a few years earlier, Napster had started driving the rise of the MP3 internet boom. In one moment, the course of history would be changed forever. Let's take a look at that key moment. And that product is called iPod. iMac, iBook, iPod. This amazing little device holds a thousand songs. And it goes right in my pocket. Through a well thought out advertising and marketing scheme, the iPod won the hearts and souls of the masses. It rose Apple back from the dead. Without this market sway, the iPhone could never have been as successful or as influential as it once was. And here we are, 11 years later. The landscape is a world away from the last decade. The iPod has become a smartphone without the phone part, so it's just simply smart. How good is the newest family of the iPod lineup? Is the iPod still relevant? How does it compare with its predecessor? What market is it even meant for? Well, let me answer those for you. Let's start with the hardware. Straight up, the iPod Touch 5G is a bit of a freak of nature. It possesses the iPhone 5's 4-inch screen and form factor, but the camera of the iPhone 4. But in addition to this, it has the processor of the iPhone 4S. Right away, you'll be able to tell that the screen has a better contrast and is brighter than its predecessor. It's now 6.1mm thin versus 7.2mm thin, and that's extremely thin. I'd like to commend Apple on their build quality because the iPod Touch 5G feels like a premium device. It's also a whole lot lighter. The new iPod feels really nice in the hand, and it's not as cold to the touch as the older model. Unfortunately, the dock has been replaced with a new pin connector. And Apple being Apple, didn't bother to include an adapter, you have to buy that separately. Which is quite disappointing. I've actually heard a lot of people saying they're steering clear just because of this reason. As a side note, we're only going to take a look at this device as a gaming and multimedia device. Once you start to compare it with other phones such as the Galaxy Note 2, uh, things just fall apart. So what about the software? It's not the iPod's fault it's running iOS 6. It really had no choice. I've used both iOS and Android devices for a long time. But I could admit, iOS felt more together and solid than Android. But not anymore. Ever since the Android 4.0 update, things have been a lot different. And that's especially true now with Jelly Bean. iOS 6 has brought along some very strange bugs. They're not deal breakers, but are still noticeable. But we'll get to that later. I'm trying to be fair and honest here, but it's my sincere thought that it's as if Apple was trying to keep some of the basic functions of the OS away for the sole purpose of introducing them later. Simple things such as some application settings being so far away out of reach and outside of the actual application itself. Other small things such as not being able to quickly toggle Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is also quite annoying at times. Don't get me wrong, it's a wonderful operating system, but it's just extremely restricted. The new screen is obviously sharp and crisp, but the amount of applications that don't take advantage of the extra screen real estate is actually quite worrying, but I'm sure developers will quickly get onto that and roll out updates to fix it. The App Store's intrusive security measures haven't gone away either. We're not going to talk about Apple Maps because you wouldn't really be using that, and it's not of great use on this device. Siri also makes an appearance here, and is more banter orientated and fun than Google Now, but some may prefer the speed of Google's new voice app for iOS. The interface may have been cutting edge in the year 2007, and a couple of years after that, but after five years it really does feel stale and in desperate need of a facelift. You may argue familiarity as a plus point, but it's ultimately up to the user to decide. On to some more positive stuff, you'll be able to notice that scrolling and swiping is a lot smoother than on the previous iPod Touch. Stuttering is mostly gone except for a few hiccups here and there. There are a few other strange glitches, like I had my scroll bar disappear and apps close on me a couple of times. The music player has finally received a facelift in iOS 6, but unfortunately there's still no option to disable cover flow. It's also annoying to still not be able to add the current song you might be listening to to an on-the-fly playlist. You still have to go and add songs by searching them individually. In general, the lack of user control is a concern. As a musician and avid music lover, I may know a thing or two about audio. First up, the audio has been altered. The bass boost selection, which is my regular EQ choice, has had the middle bass at about 250Hz increase and the treble has been cut. The external speakers have also been improved. 
they are now louder and feature less treble bleeding. Unfortunately, there was still no custom EQ after 11 years of the iPod. There were some strange unexplained problems with my Skullcandy headphones. Music would randomly stop, pause and fast forward for no reason. But strangely enough, the headphones work perfectly fine whenever I plug them back into my iPod Touch 4G. But let's try and move on to some more positive points. How's the web browsing on this device? Once again, I must congratulate Apple here. On the new iPod, web browsing is very fluid, much more so than the last past generations. Apple's A5 processor does well in terms of smoothness and just edges out a Jelly Bean device. Although without looking at them side by side, you'd hardly be able to tell the difference. Of course, there's no support for Flash and there never will be. But enough about that, let's move on to gaming. If you don't know already, the GPU and Apple's A-series chips have always been top shape. And there's no exception here. Gaming is great for just such a device. Much better than the previous model. Whether you're a casual gamer or a militant Sarge, there's plenty of power to go around. Once again, a bigger screen would definitely enhance the user experience, but we're stuck with 4 inches. Although some people may not mind at all. So let's talk about the camera. The camera's been drastically updated, however, pictures are still rubbish. Just blown up pieces of rubbish this time round. Low lighting performance is a joke, and the noise penetrates past the surface of the pictures and tends to bleed in and mess up the outline of the shapes of the objects. This is even true with the flash on for more distant objects. However, when the camera does get some light in it, it's actually quite decent. With adequate lighting, video is also quite decent for a device of this calibre. We must remember that the camera's technology is over three years old. The lack of options in the camera app is quite disappointing, but this may not matter because it seems as the camera is just geared towards happy snappers rather than anyone else. So the conclusion, the iPod Touch 5G is a decent all-rounder device, it is the flagship of a largely forgotten family and performs much better than its predecessors. However, some minor issues with the software and the steep price point makes it hard to justify at times. What are my recommendations? It depends on what you're coming from. If you're coming from an iPod 4G and it's working fine and you don't play many games or browse the web that much and just mostly use it for music, it's probably not worth the upgrade. If your phone is not a smartphone and you don't have an iPod at all, I would recommend this. If you have a newer Android phone, you're better off just using a decent music player such as Double Twist and use your phone for listening to music instead. Anyway, thank you for watching this far, and that was just a brief overview of the iPod Touch 5G. If you'd like to see more of this alternative tech kind of stuff, just check out more videos on my channel. Anyway, don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later for more videos, namely with the Galaxy Note. Oh yeah, but what about those earpods? Although a vast improvement from previous packaged earbuds, but still nothing spectacular.